Welcome back to Behind the Scenes as I take more of your questions. If you're enjoying the content on my channel, please do hit like and subscribe. As many of you know, the reason why I'm doing this alternate content right now is because of the current actor and writer strike. Um, I checked with the union and The Waltons is amongst the shows that they are on strike against due to contents of the contracts that are being renegotiated. So in the meantime, uh, you have expressed uh, an interest and willingness to have me discuss various different other things, and you have provided a number of questions, which have been very interesting for me to dig into. However, one thing I did want to fill you in on is, uh, although there are many things that we can't do right now while the actors are on strike, we have been given an okay to do certain sorts of uh, celebrity uh, gatherings, autograph shows, meet and greets, things like that. And so we have worked with a promoter in, um, who is going to bring in a number of the cast members for a gathering, a meet and greet, and, and uh, some Q&As and answering and signing some things. Uh, and we're excited to be able to share that with you and hopefully some of you will be able to come out to visit us. I am going to put the details of that and what the link is to be able to find out about tickets uh, into the content here below this video. Um, it is uh, through Eventbrite and you would search Walton Fall Fest. Um, and then there is another event that would be uh, under Walton's Nashville Riverboat Dinner Cruise. Sorry, looking at the notes on my computer. Uh, so I will put those pieces of information uh, in my notes below and also on my um, Facebook page. Uh, and I know some of the other cast members are also putting information on their Facebook pages. Um, the people who are going to be attending with me are Eric Scott, Leslie Winston, Cami Kotler, Mary McDonough, me, possibly even David Harper. He has expressed uh, possible interests. John Walmsley has even been looking into the possibility of coming over. So it could be quite a cast gathering. The dates are October 27 and 28 uh, of this year in Mayfield, Kentucky at the Cartwright Grove. There will be a meet and greet on Friday the 27th, and then there will be a murder mystery dinner, which fascinates me. I'm not quite sure how that how that happens. Either one of us is going to be uh, dispatched with, <laughs> one of us is gonna be the victim, or maybe one of us is going to be uh, the one, uh, the person, the killer, <laughs> you know. It's uh, Eric Scott in the dining room with the paperweight. <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds like it could be a lot of fun. And then there will also on Saturday, the 28th of October, a VIP breakfast, which is a limited number of tickets for that, plus then a meet and greet. And then on the 29th, looking at my computer again, because I don't have, I have this one printed out. I don't have that one printed out. Uh, on the 29th, uh, we will be in Nashville, Tennessee for a riverboat dinner cruise. Now, that's a little higher ticket uh, price. So, you know, I understand that a lot of people may not be able to meet that ticket price. But this weekend in Kentucky certainly gives you uh, a lot of very affordable options. Um, so I hope that a number of you can come out and visit with us while we are in the Kentucky and Tennessee area. So we will be available to sign autographs, although we will not be personally selling Walton photos. Uh, there will be uh, vendors there who have items for sale that then we can sign. Or if you happen to have something of your own that you want us to sign, we can sign that also. Um, and we're going to do a panel discussion. We might not be able to share unlimited stories about our time filming and about the shows and stuff like that, but certainly we can cover a lot of other sorts of information and you'll have a chance just to get to know more about us. I think you have learned quite a bit about the show over the years from us. Uh, so this, think of this as an opportunity to bring your most interesting questions um, as you have done here with me on this. So uh, again, this will be through Eventbrite. I'm going to post the information here under this video and also check out my Facebook page, uh, Cami Kotler's, Eric Scott's, 
um, we're all Mary McDonough. We're all going to be posting information about how you can get tickets and come see us. Moving on to a couple of questions from people. Lisa Lisa wanted to know a little bit more about aspects of directing, in particular, discussing a bit about how complicated it is to both act and direct in a movie. Now, the movie that she is referring to, uh, Nowhere to Hide, aka Inclusion Criteria, uh, which is available, um, I believe it's on Tubi TV and, and I think it's on Amazon. Uh, there's a picture of me on the cover of Nowhere to Hide, Inclusion Criteria. You see the back of someone in a lab coat. So whichever version you find there, feel welcome to um, rent or stream that if you haven't had a chance to see my movie. I appreciate people who have supported it. Um, although I did write it, I did not direct it. Um, in that case, uh, I had a very intensive role and I wanted outside eyes on that. However, I did do writing, directing and acting for a limited series that I did up in Canada called Bluff. And I think that might also be available on Amazon. Um, a season that we did of that. Um, so when I direct and act, I just have to be a lot more prepared in advance. Uh, what I did with that was I, I directed about four episodes and then did some reshoots on a couple of other episodes. But I learned all of my dialogue as if it were a play. So I knew what was in each episode because we were shooting not only out of sequence within an episode, but we were also shooting, it was a half hour show. So we were shooting four episodes as if it were like a two hour movie. So rather than having to keep coming in and out of particular sets, we would shoot, it was a detective show. Um, and so in the police station, we shot all of the episodes scenes from the police station at one time. So we might shoot, you know, episode three scenes, and then we might shoot episode five scenes, and then episode four scenes. So we jumped around. Uh, so I had to be prepared at any time to do a scene as an actor from any of those shows. So I didn't have a tremendous amount of dialogue, um, although I was, um, I was sort of a supporting lead in that show. So I just, for several weeks before I had to start filming, I just learned all the dialogue and I would review it regularly. So the dialogue was not an issue for me at any given time. If we were going to do scene 15 from episode four, I could just review it and go, all right, that scene, I know that scene. And then uh, I did all the, the preparation for how I wanted to uh, shoot the scene. And I worked very tightly with my, um, director of photography, a uh, cinematographer, Marvin Rush. And he was a tremendous help. I'd come in and I'd say, well, this is what I'm looking to do. And then we would discuss the best and in some cases, the most efficient way to shoot it so that we didn't need a lot of different angles because there simply wasn't the time to do that. So we would work out how we were gonna shoot things. I knew what we were gonna shoot in a given day. Sometimes if we were ahead of schedule, we might add something, which was always a bonus, but we usually had to figure out how to shoot that um, quickly, or we were getting towards the end of the day and we were behind, and so we might come to a scene and think, all right, how do we shoot this one uh, with as few different camera and relighting setups as possible? So worked with that, and then I had, there was this a monitor that I and the script supervisor and various different people could watch while filming was going on. Uh, the thing with working with a monitor that's great is you can see exactly what the camera sees. Whereas if I just stand next to the camera, which you have used to have to do when uh, there was no such thing as video monitor. So the director might sit right by the camera. Or he might sit a little further back and watch the whole thing. So as a director, you would rely on the camera operator making sure that what you were looking to shoot happened, that things were in frame, that you didn't see things you weren't supposed to see, somebody didn't walk through that wasn't supposed to be there, somebody's head didn't get cut off, uh, the things were in focus. Whereas with a monitor, we can see on the monitor, I can watch exactly what the camera sees. So if I, if it isn't what I had wanted, then 
I can correct that. What the director used to have to do is look through the lens and the person who was adjusting the dolly operator, the camera operator who moved the dolly that the camera was on would go through the moves. The um, focus puller would put everything in focus. So the director could kind of walk through that, watch what was going on, the size of the frame, all of that. Uh, now on the monitor, I can sit there as a director and say, okay, I want that a little tighter. I want it a little looser. Could you lead that more? Uh, let's adjust this. And then I can watch to see if we got what we needed or was it in focus? Um, and how did the performance come across on, on there? And then when I was on screen, I, so I would have somebody walk through my part. So physically I could see what was going on. And then I had a couple people that I trusted to watch my performance on the uh, monitor and I would give them my little watch out for this and watch out for that and make sure that those little bad habits of mine <laughs> aren't showing up. Uh, and people that I trusted to, uh, to let me know if they felt my performance was coming through. So that's what I do as, um, as a director when I'm also acting, but it's definitely more work and I just have to be more prepared. Then I have a question here from Matt Emery. Uh, was wondering if you would like to talk about your family life, parents, siblings, husband, children. Uh, did you gather for holidays and such? We always tended to do uh, Christmas together, Thanksgiving together at someone's house, whether it was my mom's or uh, my parents divorced when I was quite young. So we we typically didn't gather at my father's, but he, my parents still got along. So my father was often present also at some of those holiday gatherings. It was okay to have both of them there, uh, but not always. Uh, they, they just weren't both always there. Typically, if one of my parents was missing, it was my father. He might be doing something else. Uh, but yes, we typically would gather. Um, I lived in Canada for 10 years, so during that time, I did not make it down for holidays very often, nor did my family come up to Canada. Uh, so for those years, it was just, um, you know, smaller. I might do visit with with friends um or i might be away working during holidays but uh you know we gathered when we could uh did you ever want to try living in virginia after doing the series uh i know cammy lived there and taught school there for some time uh, i never had a particular interest i'm kind of a uh because i had grown up in southern california uh, and was always very much still engaged in the film and television industry i liked staying someplace where I had access to that. Whereas for Cammie, it made sense because she was able to find a teaching position there. That was one of the reasons I went to Canada because I worked with a theater and then I worked in film and television in Vancouver. Uh, so, you know, my moves have typically been prompted by work opportunities. Uh, although I think Virginia, I think that area is beautiful and I have loved when I've had an opportunity to go out to uh, to Schuyler and visits the Walton Museum, visits the Hamner House, and then the new bed and breakfast. So it's always sweet to be out there and see where things really happened, where Earl grew up. And then, did any of the cast actual children date? No, we didn't. Uh, I, we went out together at times, but there was never any official dates. We became more like brothers and sisters when we were still younger than we would have been dating. So uh, it was a different kind of closeness. That's what I have for this segment of Behind the Scenes. And thank you very much for your questions. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes, more of your questions. And uh, upcoming also, uh, John Dayton is going to be joining me again to talk about some of his Hollywood experiences. Always fun having John on. Keep an eye out for those. And thanks for watching.